Want to ace your MEP electrical engineer interview? Discover the 10 most common questions, expert insights, and smart strategies to confidently tackle any challenge and impress top employers. 1. Can you explain the main responsibilities of an MEP electrical engineer on a construction project? An MEP electrical engineer plays a critical role throughout the life cycle of a construction project. Their responsibilities begin with reviewing electrical design drawings and specifications to ensure alignment with project requirements and building codes. They coordinate with mechanical and plumbing engineers to resolve clashes in services and ensure efficient space usage. MEP electrical engineers also supervise installation activities, verify that contractors follow safety protocols, and confirm the use of approved materials. Site inspections, testing, and commissioning of electrical systems like lighting, power, fire alarms, and BMS integration are routine. In large-scale projects, they manage electrical load calculations, ensure energy efficiency compliance, and interact with utility providers for approvals. Their role also includes troubleshooting electrical faults, suggesting design improvements, and verifying that the project meets sustainability targets. Beyond technical tasks, they participate in project meetings to align schedules and update stakeholders on progress. Accurate documentation, including shop drawings, as built drawings, and compliance reports, is crucial. Ultimately, an MEP electrical engineer ensures that electrical systems are delivered safely, on time, within budget, and in full compliance with national and international standards. 2. What are the key codes and standards you follow in electrical design? MEP electrical engineers rely on a variety of international and local codes to ensure that electrical systems are safe, efficient, and legally compliant. The most commonly used standard is the National Electrical Code, NEC, also known as NFPA 70, which governs electrical design and installation in many countries. For projects in Europe or international projects, IEC standards, International Electrotechnical Commission, are commonly followed. In some regions, such as the Middle East, DEWA, ADDC, or SEWA regulations might apply. Additionally, IEEE standards are referenced for grounding, power quality, and protective device coordination. Engineers must also comply with building codes, LEED, and ASHRAE standards when the project involves energy efficiency or sustainability targets. Fire alarm systems must align with NFPA 72 while emergency lighting and exit signage must comply with NFPA 101 Life Safety Code. Engineers should also keep track of updates and codes, as they evolve based on new technology and safety improvements. Understanding and applying these standards not only ensures project approval by authorities but also guarantees user safety and long-term system reliability. 3. How do you perform electrical load calculations for a building? Electrical load calculation is a fundamental task for an MEP electrical engineer to size cables, transformers, panels, and generators correctly. It begins with understanding the architectural and functional layout of the building. Each space, whether residential, commercial, or industrial, has a specific power requirement based on the equipment, lighting, HVAC systems, and user behavior. Engineers refer to codes like NEC for standard load factors and diversity factors which account for the likelihood that not all equipment will operate simultaneously. Lighting loads are calculated in watts per square meter or foot, while receptacle loads depend on usage patterns. HVAC systems are coordinated with mechanical teams to account for motor starting currents and operational demands. Once connected loads are determined, demand factors reduce the total expected simultaneous usage, resulting in the maximum demand. Engineers then add spare capacity, usually 25 to 30 percent, to accommodate future expansions. These calculations are then used to size feeders, switchgear, and backup systems. Software like ETAP, Dialux, and Excel tools often aid in verifying the accuracy of manual computations. Proper load calculations ensure safety, reduce energy waste, and avoid over-designing, which can increase project costs unnecessarily. 4. What is the importance of power factor and how do you improve it? Power factor, PF is a critical concept in electrical engineering that reflects the efficiency with which electrical power is converted into useful work output. It is the ratio of real power, KW, to apparent power, KVA. A poor power factor, typically below 0.9, leads to increased demand charges from utility companies and inefficient energy usage. In MEP systems, low power factor is often caused by inductive loads like motors, transformers, and HVAC units. Improving the power factor reduces energy losses, prevents voltage drops, and increases the capacity of the existing electrical infrastructure. Common techniques to improve power factor include installing capacitor banks, synchronous condensers, or active power factor correction devices at the main distribution boards or motor control centers.
Engineers analyze the load profile and harmonic distortion before deciding on the correction method, ensuring that harmonic resonance or overcompensation doesn't occur. In modern buildings, automatic power factor correction, APFC, panels are often used to dynamically adjust based on load conditions. Keeping the power factor close to unity enhances energy efficiency, extends equipment life, and reduces operational costs, making it a key focus in MEP electrical design. 5. How do you coordinate electrical services with mechanical and plumbing systems? Coordination is a vital aspect of MEP engineering, ensuring that electrical, mechanical, and plumbing systems function seamlessly without clashes or conflicts. Electrical services like cable trays, conduits, and lighting fixtures must be routed considering the space occupied by HVAC ducts, chilled water pipes, and plumbing drains. Engineers typically use BIM, building information modeling, software like Revit or Navisworks to overlay different disciplines in a 3D environment. This allows early detection of clashes and helps adjust routing paths or elevations. Weekly coordination meetings between MEP teams ensure alignment in real time. For instance, electrical panels should not obstruct airflow or access to mechanical units. In wet areas, conduit routing must avoid water lines to prevent corrosion risks. Vertical risers are carefully designed to avoid overcrowding in shafts. Engineers also plan maintenance clearances and access hatches. Coordination also includes synchronizing the power supply to mechanical equipment like air handling units, chillers, and pumps, ensuring proper control wiring and safety interlocks. Successful coordination results in fewer site modifications, reduced delays, and lower costs. It ensures that all systems coexist in the limited ceiling and shaft spaces typical in modern buildings. 6. What methods do you use for testing and commissioning electrical systems? Testing and commissioning are final but critical phases in any MEP electrical project. They ensure that all installed systems function as designed and comply with applicable standards. The process begins with a pre-commissioning checklist, which includes verifying correct installation of cables, connections, breakers, labeling, and earthing. Continuity and insulation resistance tests are performed using megometers. For switchgear and panels, functional testing ensures correct operation of protective devices like MCBS, MCCBS, and relays. Load testing simulates actual operating conditions to observe system stability. For lighting systems, lux level measurements confirm that design illumination levels are met. Emergency systems, including exit signage and UPS, are tested for response during simulated power failures. For generators, engineers check fuel system, synchronization, and automatic transfer switching, ATS, functions. In fire alarm and life safety systems, testing includes verification of detectors, sounders, and interface with ventilation and sprinkler systems. Documentation includes test results, equipment calibration certificates, and client approvals. A structured commissioning process prevents future failures, enhances reliability, and provides clients with confidence that their electrical systems are ready for operation. 7. How do you ensure electrical safety on-site during installation? Electrical safety is paramount in any MEP project and begins with a culture of strict adherence to safety protocols. Engineers first ensure that all work is conducted as per approved method statements and risk assessments. Personal protective equipment, PPE, such as insulated gloves, helmets, and arc flash suits, must be mandatory for site workers. Lockout tagout, LOTO, procedures are enforced to prevent accidental energization of circuits under maintenance. Engineers confirm that all temporary power systems are properly grounded and protected with RCDS, residual current devices. Cables are stored safely to prevent trip hazards or damage, and live panels are secured with clear danger signage. Supervision is key. Qualified personnel monitor high-voltage works and ensure proper clearances are maintained. Safety drills and toolbox talks keep teams updated on emergency procedures. Regular audits and inspections help detect and rectify unsafe conditions early. Earth continuity and insulation resistance tests must be done before energizing any system. By integrating safety from the design stage to final commissioning, engineers protect lives, prevent costly incidents, and maintain legal compliance. 8. What is the role of earthing and how do you design an earthing system? Earthing, or grounding, is one of the most essential safety features in an electrical installation. It provides a path for fault current to flow safely to the ground, preventing electric shocks and equipment damage. Earthing systems also stabilize voltage levels and improve lightning protection. MEP electrical engineers design earthing based on building size, type of equipment, and soil resistivity. The system typically includes main earthing conductors, electrodes, earth rods or plates, and bonding connections to metal parts and enclosures. Soil resistivity tests, such as the Wenner method, help determine the number and length of electrodes needed to achieve a resistance value usually below 1 or 2 ohms. 
In large installations, a grid earthing system or chemical earthing may be used to maintain stable grounding in poor soil. All metallic non-current carrying parts, including cable trays and duct supports, are bonded to the earth bar. Separate earthing systems may be used for lightning, equipment, and electronics to prevent interference. Accurate sizing, material selection, typically copper, and periodic testing are key to ensuring earthing effectiveness and longevity. 9. How do you handle change requests or design modifications during execution? Handling design changes efficiently is a hallmark of a skilled MEP electrical engineer. Change requests can arise due to site constraints, client requirements, coordination issues, or unforeseen conditions. The process starts by reviewing the proposed change in terms of feasibility, impact on other services, and compliance with codes. Engineers conduct quick but thorough impact analysis, checking whether the modification affects cable sizes, breaker ratings, or load distribution. Cost and time implications are also assessed, and revised drawings or calculations are submitted for approval. Coordination with other disciplines is essential to prevent new conflicts. Once approved, engineers issue a revised IFC, issued for construction, drawing and update the bill of quantities. On-site instructions are then clearly communicated to contractors to avoid errors. Documentation is crucial. Every change is logged for final as built drawings and handover records. Frequent, undocumented changes can lead to disputes or delays, so engineers must strike a balance between flexibility and control. A structured change management process ensures quality, avoids rework, and keeps the project aligned with the client's expectations. 10. What are the common challenges you face in MEP electrical projects and how do you overcome them? MEP electrical engineers often face a variety of challenges, from space constraints and material delays to coordination conflicts and design mismatches. One major challenge is ensuring that electrical systems fit into tight ceiling spaces already occupied by HVAC ducts and plumbing. BIM modeling helps visualize and resolve such spatial issues before installation. Delays in material delivery or vendor approvals can disrupt schedules. To counter this, engineers plan procurement early and maintain buffer stocks of essential items. Design errors or last-minute client changes require flexible thinking and quick recalculations to avoid downstream issues. Managing interdisciplinary coordination is crucial. Lack of communication between civil and MEP teams can cause misaligned cutouts or inaccessible panels. Site safety, especially during energized work, is another constant concern that requires ongoing vigilance. Regulatory approvals may be delayed due to incomplete documentation or non-compliance. To overcome these, engineers develop strong organizational habits, maintain detailed logs, and build good relationships with clients and authorities. Effective communication, proactive planning, and a problem-solving mindset are essential for delivering successful MEP electrical projects. Preparing for an MEP electrical engineer interview means knowing more than just theory. You need practical insight and strong problem-solving skills. Use these questions to sharpen your approach and stand out as a confident, well-prepared professional in your next interview.